Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Wednesday night Bible study. You folks that are here, you at home as well, why don't you join us as we worship this evening?
everything. Amen. Got to have Marita, son, even though I'm saved. My eyes ain't saved yet. <laughs> yeah, sir. Yeah, sir. Why doesn't All right. Evening, peoples. <laughs> Heavy on the mister. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, does anybody got anything they'd like to share? Prayer requests, praise reports. I'd like to uh, drink some wine from Puerto tonight. Can't take. Wine, sister? Yes. All right. Anybody else? Go see Bill and Susan back. Yeah. Yeah, Europe didn't want to keep them, so they. <laughs> yes, sir. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Father, we thank you today, uh, Father, for allowing us to, to gather here. Uh, we bless you and uh, we thank you again, God, for uh, your blessing upon our life, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your Son, who's a perpetuation for our sin. We thank you, Lord, for the precious Holy Spirit that comes to guide us and lead us. And again, Father, we just bless you this day, Lord, and just give you all the praise and all the glory because you are worthy of it, Lord. And again, Father, we're so ever thankful for your hand upon our life, God, and your blessings and your care for us, Lord, and your faithfulness, Lord God, your tender mercies, your grace. And Father, we just ask you to bless our time together tonight, this uh, time of Bible study, Lord, where we come and uh, learn more about you and uh, so that we can apply more what you've already shared with us to our life, Lord. And again, God, we honor you tonight. We ask you to be in our midst, Lord, to help us do things that are pleasing in your sight, God. We ask you to bless the church and the pastor and his family, Lord. Uh, we just give you praise tonight in your son's name. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right. So, guys, I'm going to start a new study. I've never done this before, this study. Uh, and, uh, but um, I'm hoping it's beneficial, and I'm I'm learning in the process of it. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna do a series, and we're gonna um, um, we're gonna be talking about how to study the Bible. <clears throat> we we come and we gather and, and, and things like this, and we tell you to turn to your Bibles. And but I don't think we've done a, a good enough job of explaining why we need to study our Bibles and how to go about doing that. Um, I hear from, you know, folks all the time that they find that, you know, the way it is written is overwhelming at times, and 
know, then people want to know what, what translation should they use and all these things. So I'm going to try to uh, cover some of these things. Um, but I want to spend tonight first laying a foundation um, <clears throat> and say that before we begin uh, learning how to study it, we want to ask the question, why do we need to study the Bible? And it's going to be interactive. So, why do we need to study the Bible? Get closer to God. Okay, get closer to God. What else? I mean, normally when you when you want to practice something or do what you're supposed to do or the right thing, you have to kind of know where it's coming from. So you study it so it gives you a guide <coughs> on how to actually practice properly. Yes. All right, so guys, I'm, I'm going to give you some good intel right here, and you can thank me later, but I'm here to help you. Thank you. You might want to hear it first. Oh, okay. <laughs> right. So here, here's the deal. <clears throat> Everything you just said is true. So why do we study anything? To learn, to know more about it, right? Uh, to figure out how it works. So guys, that when we get finished with something, we don't have extra tools and pieces left over because we chose not to read the instructions, right? Man, where'd that boat go? I don't know. <laughs> Somewhere in there. Um, we'll, find we'll find out later. Um, <clears throat> so here, here's, here's the way some of this works. Have you ever known someone who was guilty of a crime? You knew it. They knew it but they hadn't had the court proceedings. What do we challenge them to do? Be honest. Okay. Confess. What else? Confess. No. Mm -mm. Turn themselves in? Nope. Confess. Nope. Find a good lawyer. Mm -hmm. Right? I mean, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. We, we've known people who've been innocent. What do we tell them to do? Right? De depending on the seriousness of the country, hey, man, I didn't do it. Well, you need to find what? Good lawyer. So, guys, what, what differentiates a good lawyer from a bad lawyer? You want a lawyer that knows the law. Come on, son. You want a lawyer that knows the law. <laughs> I might need to move you to the front of the class. We <laughs> need a lawyer that knows the law. Why? These are not trick questions. <laughs> because if he knows the law, he can help you the best. Yes. So that's how laws get made. Who is going to be impressed by the lawyer knowing the law? The judge. Who? The judge. the judge. So you and I know people who were guilty of a crime, but because they had a what? Good lawyer. They walked out. Is that right? You and I also know people who were innocent of a crime, didn't have a good lawyer, and didn't walk out. So guys, for us, it's not so much as whether we're guilty or innocent. It's do we know the law? Do we have a good lawyer? When we go before the judge... The more law that we can quote, the more law that we know, the more impressed the judge is. Am I making sense? Mm -hmm. we, we study this word so that we can do as, uh, let's go, let me, let me, I'm getting ahead of myself. 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy 2 and 15. It says what? Mm-hmm. How are we getting the Samuel there, uh, Thomas? Yeah. That what you showed is funny, though. 
2 Timothy 2 and 15. It says to study, to show thyself approved unto whom? God. A workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So one of the reasons, there are many reasons to study about it. One of the reasons that we study the Bible, and listen, there's a difference between reading something and studying something. Okay? It's fine for you to have a Bible plan. I have a Bible plan. I, I, I follow app, um, and I read the Bible in a year, every year. That, that's fine. So I'm reading. That's reading. That's not studying. There's a difference. Okay? You study things that you want to get better at. You read things to say you know them. Okay? So the Bible says that we are to study to show ourselves approved. Okay? So one of the reasons that we study the Bible is so that we can know more about God. Let's go to um, Psalm one, excuse me, Psalm 93. One. Psalm ninety three one. And guys, you know what's gonna happen when we start studying the Bible? We're gonna encounter a God. It says the Lord reigneth, he is clothed with majesty, the Lord is clothed with strength, wherewith he hath girded himself the world. Also established, it cannot be moved. Verse 4. Let's look at verse 4. It says, The Lord is high, on high is mightier than the noise of many waters, yea, than the mighty waves of the sea. Okay? We're going to, as we get into this word and we study it and we acquaint ourselves with it and we just immerse our souls in it. We're going to learn more about him and, and grow to know him on a deeper level. Okay? Um, I shared this not too long ago. But I, I was telling the story of uh, my cousin slash neighbor. Uh, bought a pool. And they had a little pool party. <coughs> and... Um, and so my, my aunt, she said she was getting in the pool. It's kind of hard to believe, but what she meant was she was going to sit beside the pool and put her feet in it. That's some enjoyable. That's, you know, she, her son, my, my cousin, he actually got in the pool, but he just was wading in the pool up to his waist. My little cousin, how did she get in the pool? She jumped in it. She got the full experience of the water over the head, the, the whole, the whole thing. See, the, there's, there's different levels and depths that we can go. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to submerse ourselves in this word. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the Bible. How many books in the Bible? 66. How many in the Old Testament? 39, 66 minus 39 is what? 27. So there's 27 books uh, in the New Testament. The Bible itself is, which is one of the fascinating things about it, it was written over a 1,500 uh, year span. Um, and there's a common theme that, that goes throughout the Bible that you're going to find from the first threads of the Old Testament to the last words of the New Testament. And it's about redemption. It is an account. And guys, I don't use the word story when I talk about the Bible. Because stories are things that are made up. I talk about accounts. Things that actually happen. And what we're going to learn is when we study this word, we find out what actually happened. We find out what God's thoughts were. What God's thoughts are towards man. We find out what his plan is toward man. And how he put this plan together to redeem mankind. Okay? All right, let's look at some more scripture. <clears throat> Psalm 
Let's go to John 5 and 39. John 5 and 39. Who's this speaking? Some of y'all's Bibles in red, right? So Jesus said, Search the scriptures. For in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. Verse 40. And ye will not come to me that ye might have life. What is Jesus saying here? He's saying you're reading just to be reading. If you're reading the Bible and you don't see Jesus in it, you're not looking for him. Remember, uh, for the past few weeks, and I was talking about doubt and unbelief. Remember what I said about evidence when it comes to unbelief? That those who have a foundation of unbelief, the evidence won't necessarily change that. Remember about the Pharisees and the Sadducees? They saw the same miracles that people did. And instead of being happy for people that were being healed and uh, people that were brought back to life, uh, they started talking about what day you're eating on. Uh, you went and got the showbread. Why well, your disciples didn't wash their hands? They weren't looking for the healings. They weren't looking for, they weren't happy that it happened. They were trying to find the technicalities of where he had failed in the law. They weren't looking for evidence. Evidence was not going to change them. And again, when you're dealing with people, when you're talking to people, you have to be at peace that even though you present uh, what you feel is evidence for what you're sharing, you have to dust your feet off sometimes. You shared it. You have to be at peace with that. Okay? So again, we want to find Jesus in these scriptures. And that's what you should find when you read these scriptures, okay? You should find, uh, you should find the Lord Jesus in these things, all right? Okay. Now, <clears throat> when, we, when we study, guys, it helps broaden our base of what we know, okay? So <clears throat> we want to be able to, to search the scriptures to find those things that God has said. And guys, we don't just want to re, uh, read them. We want to remember them. We want to remember them. Remember I talked a little earlier about being in a court of law. And, you, and the good lawyer knows how to cite case law. That impresses the judge. The judge will rule in our favor. Not because we're innocent. But because we have a good lawyer. What happened to us as believers how do we get saved? Because we were great? Because we were good people? That's not what happened. We had somebody to advocate for us. Represented us before the Father. So when the Father looks at us, he doesn't see us. He sees us through his Son. Okay? His Son is our lawyer. Okay? All right. <clears throat> so... One of the things that we want to make sure that we're doing is I want to go to uh, Romans 12. Uh, Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. <clears throat> Romans 12. The Bible says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good 
and acceptable and perfect will of God. So we want to do more, guys, than just grow up. We want to do more than just get older. What is the Bible challenging us to do in this scripture here? What is it challenging us to do? To be what? Transformed. What does it mean to be transformed? Trans means a cross, right? Change, form. We want to be, we want to be transformed. We want to become, go from being this person to this person. We are trying to be, become more and more in the image of our Savior. We're not trying to become a better version of ourselves. That's what the world says. The Bible says, be ye transformed. Now, how do you transform yourself? How does the transformation occur? Renewing of what? Your mind. Bible says, as a man thinketh what? So is he. So you 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 become what you think about. If all you if all you do is fill your life with negative thoughts, how is good things gonna happen? You know, human beings are funny creatures. Um we'll track somebody down on Facebook, they say something about us or our cousins, our mamas or granddads. Track them down. Drag them down. Drag them down. Drag them down. But you speak to yourself negative every day. And then you follow that up with another negative comment about yourself. <laughs> then you get mad when people say the negative things that you're saying about yourself to you. But you just said what they said. Guys, have y'all noticed that it's hard for you in your natural state of mind to continually speak goodness over yourself? Okay, only Matt agrees with me on that. Right? So, listen, I got a news flash. Your mind is not your friend. Okay. Uh, it was your mind that said, hey, man, we can have one more drink and we'll get in that car. You will. You will. Your mind is not your friend. The Bible says uh, in Romans 8 that the mind is enmity against God. The natural mind is enmity against God. The natural mind hates God. It doesn't want to do what God wants us to do. That's why we have to train and discipline ourselves. I like dogs. I don't like stupid dogs. And I don't like hard-headed dogs. I like dogs. Don't like stupid dogs. And I don't like hard-headed dogs. If I tell a dog something, that's what I want to do. If he can't do that, then he needs to be at somebody else's house. I do not like hard-headed dogs. Because I, I, I can't keep retraining and they're not accepting the training. So, guys, we have to fall in line and do what God said. We have to quit being um, led by our emotions. I'm not telling you not to have them because emotions have a, have, a, have a purpose, but you're not to be led by them. Okay? All right. Let's continue here. <clears throat> so what is it about this word, guys? Um. Let's go to the book of Hebrews, chapter 5, and we're going to look at verses 13 and 14. Hebrews, chapter 5, verses 13 and 14. says, for everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of what? Full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. A lot of good parents 
will give their kids, the little kids, explicit instructions when it comes to dealing with other people. And you hear this all the time. Don't what? Talk <coughs> to strangers. Okay? Why are, we, why, are we, why are we saying that? Because little kids have a tendency to trust grown people. So we, parents give instructions to kids, say, hey, don't talk to strangers because they're kids. God does not intend for us to be on milk forever. Maybe start on milk, but you should end up on milk, okay? As we get older and we should get wiser, those two don't necessarily go together. Okay? When you get older, you just get older. Okay, that's what that means. But we should be seeking wisdom and to get wiser. Paul is saying, listen, in order for you to mature, you'll you know you mature when you're able to handle strong meat. That is, that I can give you, I can correct you. You don't take it personally, you apply it. Okay? I got another news flash. This life, guys, the reason we want to study this word. It's not just so that we can know it. It's so that we can apply it. Because in this life, it's not what you know. It's what you walk in. There are some aspects about our walk with Christ that should only speak from the way we live. It's not what we say, but it's how we live this life. There are certain things that only that only how we live this life should speak to people. Okay? All right. Let's keep going. So we just talked about um, being transformed, right? So <clears throat> let's go to the book of Hebrews chapter 4. And we're going to be in verse 12. It says, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow. It is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So God's word is powerful, guys. Never forget that. There is power in the word of God. Remember, what I, I, I asked the question before and I, and I said, how did God make the universe? How did he do it? He spoke it. He spoke it. So your your words carry power. If your words carry power, how much word power does God's words carry? Bill taught us uh, a few weeks ago about about the angels, and one of the things that the angels do is that they hearken to the word of God. They hearken to the word of God. So how are they going to hearken to something if you don't know it? So I got my little basketball organization, right? And communication is key in everything, right? No matter what part of life you're in, right? I mean, it's, it's just key. So I found out that parents um, need to have just a plethora, a plethora of information, okay? But you know what I told them? You don't read and your kids don't read. I'm going to send you out a whole bunch of information. I'm going to attach you to a group, and many of you not even going to read it, uh, it's going to tell you what time, I'm going to give you the app, and it's going to tell you what time we play, where we play. Some of y'all still going to put in the chat, what time do we play? We had a popcorn sale, and I forgot to tell y'all about that, but we had a popcorn sale, right? It's four days. It started on Thursday, end on Monday. Okay? I wrote all this up. Hey, guys, we got a popcorn sale. Start on Thursday at 5, go in Monday at 5. Go ahead and set your store up. I'm typing this, me typing. 
Go ahead and set the store up. Go ahead and tell people. Go ahead and send a note out to all your the address book. Let them know about your popcorn store. Okay? Bill, what, guess what happened at Thursday at 5 o'clock? Excuse me. Monday at 5 o'clock. When I can't set my store up. The code don't work. What? Right. It's not going to work. The sale's over. Where were the instructions? <laughs> if you just scroll up, they were, they were right there. <laughs> so guys, ignorance will cost us. You and I choosing not to read this word and become acquainted with it and know it. When we go before the judge and we're trying to defend ourselves, listen to me now, I'm trying to help you. When we go before the judge and we defend ourselves, he's not looking at how cute we are. He, he's, he's not looking at what had happened was. What he's more concerned about is do you know the law? Guys, do you know what he says about you and can you repeat that to him? This might be the most dangerous rep in the world, pretty close to it. Man, it keeps us from a lot of things. And I know y'all get this thing, like mine comes on Sundays, Alex. And it says, you used your phone 32 minutes more than you did last week. I'm like, well, that was a big number last week. Great day. I'm on this thing. So we're not going to be able to go with him at the end of it all and say, well, we didn't have time. This thing is already tracking how long you've been on it. You just scrolling up. More about nothing. Where should we be using that time, guys, in this word? Guys, guess what? These days, you don't even have to read as much as you used to. They got books on tape. You, they got podcasts. They, 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 they got the Bible. You, they, on my way to work, I can just hit play and just listen to it. But Sam, it's got to be important to us. We, we, got to, we, we have to understand why God said to study. You study for what? Knowledge, because you're going to have a test, guys. You think just because you say the devil's, oh, man, that boy's saved now. Good gracious. <laughs> nah, he just got to change the way he come at you now. So you know you're saving yourself now. You ain't doing them things you used to do. Uh, can we have midnight Bible study? <laughs> no, no, no. Not this week. <laughs> No, 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 no. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Guys, we have, we have to study to show ourselves approved. Guys, studying pleases God. We get in this word and we find out things about God. We find out how wonderful, how majestic, how awesome is he. We find out the promises available to us. How much scripture, I'm not, don't raise your hand, I'm just asking you a question. How much scripture do you know? When you come upon a situation, what is your first response, guys? You come, you, you, you come upon an adverse situation, what's our first response? One of my pet peeves, and I got a long list of those, um, is when Christians use the word luck. Well, that thing, that thing, that thing just, huh? Luck and karma. Or they start quoting horoscopes. That's another thing. But we should know the word. We should know the word. And when we come, at, come, come upon adverse conditions and situations, our first response is not, well, with my luck, what you talking about, man? You just alive. What you talking about, luck? Did you not think that things were going to happen to you when you live in this life just because you saved? Listen, man, you better know what this word says. The Bible says, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. The Bible says that I'm the head and not the tail. The Bible says I will live and not die. The Bible says that he heard the cry of the righteous, and he answered them. The Bible says that he delivered them out of all their trouble. Now, we, now God is saying, okay, listen, remember what I told y'all. Remember what I told y'all. See, we want God to respond to our situation. 
We want God to look upon us and say, oh, let me do something. That's not normally how it works. That's not normally how it works. God uses his ears. He responds to what he hears more than what he sees. We're in a situation. We got some stuff going on. How do we respond to it? What do you want God to do with the words that come out of your mouth? You're in a situation. You got a sick loved one. How, how, what do we say with our mouth? The Bible says that there is power of death and life in the tongue. Do you believe that? So why do you keep speaking death over yourself? Why do you keep speaking negative things in the atmosphere? Why, why, do, we, why do we just so full of negativity? Why aren't we blessing people? When life comes at us, what are we doing? How are we responding to it? <coughs> Somebody comes to you with some gossip. How do you respond? Oh, girl, for real? Let's pray about it. What else happened? Let's pray about it. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's, that's, just, that's just gossip, man. That's all that is. All right? Guys, we, we respond to life with the word. Say that, again. Say that with me. We respond to life with the word. Isaiah 8 and 20. I think that's right. I want y'all look at this. Hopefully I said the right one. Isaiah 8 and 20. Hmm. To the law and to the testimony, if thy speak not according to this word, it is because <coughs> there is no light in them. Bless you. What does that mean? Let me help you out. <clears throat> What's the young fellow's name? Just give me a. So, he's in this school. Mind his business. Somebody come, open his lunchbox, take his jelly sandwich. Ethan get upset, put my man in a headlock, slam him to the ground. Ethan overreact to the sandwich. What do we normally say to little children? What do we tell them? Say you're sorry. Not be sorry. Say you're sorry. So we ingrained at an early age to tell people to say things that they don't mean. So we get in the habit of saying things that have no meaning. We get in the habit of saying things that have no power behind them. Bible made, are there Bibles made every day? I would venture to guess there are a few unbelievers that are making Bibles. Okay. Is this God's word? The word in and of itself is mostly powerless in our life unless we apply it. You probably got, a, at home, you probably got a, a cabinet full of Band-Aids. If you have a cut, and you say, oh, well, there's a Band-Aid in the cabinet. But if you don't stop the bleeding and apply it, <laughs> what good is it? So, guys, it's, it's, not, it's the application of the word. It's not the word itself. It's the application of the word. Guys, it's not just speaking the word. It's believing what you're speaking. If I was to call Sandra right now, and, and I would if I had more time, and I put it on speakerphone, and I call and say, honey, I love you, what would she say? 
No, she would not. No, she would not. She said, what you done? What is it that you want? Why? Because I don't normally call off the cuff saying, I love you. You up to something. <laughs> Come on now. I, she's saying, you, you're speaking words, but they're not, they're not believable in the, at this moment in this context because that's not how you do things. We, we, how, many, how many times has you been in a relationship and the person you with said, I love you, like, and, it, and it didn't matter? And you thought if you said it again, that it would change the situation. Nope. What they were saying is, listen, I, I hear what you're saying, but there needs to be a meaning behind what you're saying. You, 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 you can't just say you're sorry without actually being sorry, because you, you've been saying that all week. You've been saying that all month. You've been saying that for years. But there's no change in your behavior to indicate that you actually mean what you say. So guys, here, here's what we do. We, 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 we say God's word, right? And we, and we expect that word to go out and do something. But there's no belief in it. You don't, you don't believe what you're saying. You're just saying it. And this is one of the tricks of the enemy. Is that he gets us to believe that God's word is not powerful. I'm going to throw a concept out here. I'm not going to go in it deeply. I just want you to think about it. It's not a trick question. It's not a trick statement. Where do your prayers go when you pray? Oh, you speak it in belief. Where'd it go? Okay, go to the throne. Where at on the throne? What does the Bible say? Hold on. Um, Go to Revelation chapter 8. Lord have mercy. Verse 3. It says, Then another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was much given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with what? Prayer. The what? Prayer. Of who? Who are, who are the saints? It's me and you. The altar saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. Verse 4. Verse 4, and the smoke of the incense, which came with what? Of who? Ascended up out of what? I'm trying to help y'all. Verse 10, I'm not verse 10, I'm sorry. Verse 5. I'm sorry about it, Tommy. Verse 5. It says, Then the angel took the censer and filled it with the fire of the altar and cast it to the earth, and there were voices and thunder and lightning and earthquake. So let me back up. Let me ask you again. When you pray, where do your prayers go? You just read it. There's, a, there's an angel standing on the altar. Your prayers go up, and they are mixed with incense. <clears throat> And then your, then your prayers are presented before God. What am I saying? What, what am I talking So, so let me, here's a concept. I want you to understand. In the Old Testament, 
What was the sacrifice? Some some beast, right? Right. Okay, could be a goat. Okay, so that was the sacrifice, right? Y'all with me? What did they do to the sacrifice? How did they burn it? I'm not trying to be funny. How did they burn it? Put a fire up under it, right? What did the fire cause? Come on. Fire caused the smoke, right? Pleasing aroma to the Lord. Listen to what the Lord is saying. Have y'all ever have y'all ever smelled a burnt animal? Have you ever smelled a burnt animal with hair, guts, and everything? Have you smelled? I'm not talking about when you cut the, when you cut the steaks out to a crisp. You think that smells good? But the Bible says it's what a sweet aroma to him. So here we are now, y'all. Listen to me. This is this is strong meat. What I'm trying to give you. So we're talking about how great the sacrifice is, right? Jesus is our sacrifice. We're in the New Testament now. Jesus is our sacrifice, right? That's wonderful. He's our sacrifice. We need more than that. What I'm talking about. Guys, it's the intensity and the fervency of which you pray. That's your wood. That's what creates the smoke. That's what goes up to heaven. And that's what gets God's attention. 